Hello, and uh, thank you for joining in. My name is Andre Larochelle. I'm principal investigator on a study evaluating a new drug called l Bag for the treatment of Fanconi anemia, as I will describe briefly in this presentation. This study is conducted at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, in the United States. As many of you may know, Fanconi anemia is a genetic disease that affects almost every organ of, of the body. Uh, individuals with Fanconi anemia have an increased risk of developing various cancers, particularly of the blood, usually during the teenage years, uh, as well as solid tumors, most often of the head and neck in the third decade of life. They may also present with various congenital anomalies such as, such as abnormal thumbs, kidney malformation, cafe au lait macules on their skin, short stature, digestive difficulties, and heart malformations. However, most patients will develop low blood counts during the first decade of life. Blood cells are mostly produced in the bone marrow, which is a soft, spongy material in the center of the bone. Low blood counts are due to failure of the bone marrow to produce sufficient blood cells. This complication accounts for significant morbidity and mortality. Current therapeutic options such as androgen and stem cell transplantations are limited by their toxicity. So in this clinical study, we are evaluating an alternative treatment for patients with Fanconi anemia. So to better understand this study, let's first look at why marrow fails and why blood counts are low in Fanconi anemia. Two mechanisms have been implicated. First, bone marrow cells are unable to properly repair DNA damage that forms in our cells due to exposure to environmental toxins or due to normal cell function or metabolism. This is due to inactivating mutations in genes that would normally produce proteins involved in DNA repair. Second, inflammatory proteins that are released by the stressed failing bone marrow are also contributing to marrow failure by directly killing cells within the bone marrow and also by producing additional DNA damage that cannot be repaired properly in Fanconi anemia. Accumulation of DNA damage and inflammation are particularly toxic to stem cells found in the bone marrow. These stem cells are the mother cells of all blood cells, such as red blood cells that carry oxygen to tissues and gives us energy, platelets that help blood clotting, and white blood cells that fight infections. Over time, when more stem cells are affected by DNA damage and inflammation, blood production decreases and eventually stops resulting in anemia, bleeding, as well as life-threatening infections. So the goal of our study is to find out if the study medication l can improve bone marrow and blood counts in patients with Fanconi anemia. We also want to find out if l is safe in patients with Fanconi anemia. So first, what is l -traumapag? Well, l -traumapag, or EPAG is a pill that patients take by mouth once daily. It mimics a protein that is thought to be defective in Fanconi anemia called thrombopoietin or TIPO. TIPO is important for stem cells in the bone marrow. So for many years, we have studied this drug in the lab to understand its mechanisms of action. We found that EPAG can improve DNA repair in bone marrow stem cells. We also observed that it can evade or overcome the negative effects of inflammation on stem cells. In other words, EPAG helps stem cells work better to improve all blood counts, red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. 
Does it work? Well, the short answer is yes in most patients. Here's what we have. So we have enrolled 12 patients with Fanconi anemia to date and many more with other diseases. Most patients with Fanconi anemia in our study are children less than 12 years of age, but we have also enrolled older individuals. Most patients have mutations in the Fanconi gene A, which is the most commonly mutated gene among the 23 known Fanconi genes. We can enroll patients with mutation in any of the Fanconi genes. Most patients have never received treatment before enrolling. Those on Danazol must stop treatment before starting l bag. Patients who had a stem cell transplantation are not eligible for our study. And finally, most patients at all three blood cell types affected, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Remarkably, we found that l pack improved bone marrow in all 12 patients treated to date. The picture on the left panel show a representative example of bone marrows for one patient. There are thin cuts visualized under a microscope of bone marrow specimens that were collected before starting treatment on the left and after six months of treatment with l pack on the right. The white areas represent fat, whereas the purplish areas represent the cells that we want to detect that are responsible for blood production. As you can see, the percentage of cells in the marrow increased fourfold during treatment from less than fivefold or 5% at baseline to 20% after six months. So it's a bit like l pack help fill up the bone marrow tank. We also found that l pack improves blood count, at least one type of blood cells, and sometimes all three types, in 10 of 12 patients. The two patients who did not have improvement in their blood counts were the most affected. So it is very important to start treatment early before all marrow stem cells have been destroyed. The graft on the right panel show the red blood cells, which we generally see improving first. As you can see, most patients showed quite impressive increases in red blood cells. Some will receive red blood cell transfusion before treatment became transfusion independent or decrease their requirements. Red blood cells stabilize or continue to improve in some patients when treatment was continued beyond six months of treatment. Let's look at platelet counts. Improvement in platelet counts generally followed soon after the increase in red blood cells with doubling in platelet counts relative to baseline by six months of, of treatment. Like red blood cells, platelet counts stabilized or continue to improve when treatment was continued beyond six months. Finally, let's look at the white blood cells or specifically at the neutrophils, which are a type of white blood cells. A neutrophil response has been observed in three patients thus far. Apart from patient nine, who had a rapid increase in, in white blood cell counts, response is generally observed much later for this cell type as seen in subject two and three, who have been treated the longest on this study, providing them both with a good response for all three blood types. Is l pack safe? Well, the short answer is also yes. This is a list of possible side effects that can be observed with l pack treatment in other diseases, such as liver test abnormalities, skin rash, and stomach pain. These side effects have not been observed in any of our patients with Fanconi anemia. 
However, iron deficiency developed in all patients, except those who were dependent on red blood cell transfusion at study entry, which uh, is a well-known cause of iron overload or increased iron levels. Low iron is easily treated. We monitor iron levels um, monthly and begin iron pill supplements when levels fall below a certain threshold. For children, iron supplementation can simply be given in the form of a multivitamin that contains higher amounts of iron than standard multivitamins. Importantly, and this is the last point, we have not observed the development of cancers on our study, such as leukemia or myelodysplastic syndrome. So the study involves four steps, including an initial referral from your physician, an evaluation at the NIH to assess eligibility, treatment with l for six months for eligible patients, uh, and participation in an extended phase for up to three years for patients who respond to treatment at six months who wish to continue longer. So let's look at each step in more detail. In step one, we ask your doctor to send us recent medical summaries, physical examinations, blood counts, Fanconi testing, record of transfusion, and other information so we can assess the likelihood of meeting our inclusion criteria. This information can be sent directly to me at the contact information listed here and by referencing the study number. In step two, if your records suggest you might be eligible, we invite you to come to the NIH for a first assessment. During that visit, we conduct an extensive evaluation, including a full physical exam. We obtain blood samples, a marrow biopsy, a small skin biopsy on the shoulder, and we take photographs after your consent. The NIH pays for travel, lodging, and all testing during your evaluations. Some of the inclusion and exclusion criteria are listed here. Eligible patients must be at least two years of age, more than 10 kilograms in weight, with a confirmed diagnosis of Fanconi anemia. They must have at least one of the following blood counts, including platelet counts less than 50,000 or transfusion dependence, neutrophils less than 1,000, and hemoglobin less than 10 or transfusion dependence. As discussed before, androgens cannot be given at the same time as l -tromopag. Patients on androgens are asked to discontinue treatments four weeks before starting l -tromopag. We cannot enroll patients with active infections or cancers, women who are pregnant, or patients with recent history of heart disease or clotting. Kidney tests more than 2.5 times the upper limit of normal or liver tests more than five times the upper limit of normal are also part of our exclusion criteria. In step three, eligible patients are invited to return to the NIH within two to 16 weeks of the initial screening visit evaluation. During this third step, we obtain small amounts of blood and provide you with a three to six month supply of l -tromopine. The medication is provided free of charge to you. We also provide extensive instructions on how to take l tablets, importantly, at least four hours before or after food and other medications. During the first six months of treatment, we see each patient at the NIH after three and six months of treatment. When extensive blood work is drawn, blood work and a marrow is repeated. 
between the NIH visits, we monitor blood counts, liver tests, and iron levels once monthly. Blood can be drawn by your local doctor who will also perform a brief physical exam. We communicate with your doctor to obtain and review results. We also communicate with each patient directly on a regular basis to address questions and inform them if any changes are needed to the dose of l pack based on blood test results. We also ask patients to let us know before starting any new medication during treatment, as some may interfere with l pack and are not allowed on our study. In the fourth and last step of the study, we review patients' response to l pack at six months. l pack is stopped if blood counts have not improved or before six months if we note side effects, which we have not so far. Responders at six months are offered enrollment in the extended access phase of the trial for up to three additional years. During the extended phase, monthly blood work is obtained by the local physician and more extensive evaluations are done twice yearly at the NIH. We may also attempt reducing dose of l pack in patients with a more robust blood response. On this, in the name of the entire team, some of which is shown here, I would like to thank you for your attention. My contact information is listed here again. Please do not hesitate to contact me for any questions you may have. I will answer every email, text, or call I receive. Thank you very much.